Hi, this is Jesse, and today we're going to talk about another very important programming principle. Uh, this one is called You Ain't Gonna Need It, or YAGNI. And uh, so we can add this to our long list of uh, ridiculous acronyms used to describe programming principles. Um, this is another programming principle that's useful for all programming, but I'm going to talk about it uh, as it relates to video game programming. So this principle comes into play when you're working on something that you're guessing you might need at some point in the future. And of course, generally speaking, your guess is wrong and you aren't going to need it. So like many of these principles, it sounds obvious. Why would you ever write something that you might never use? But in practice, it comes up pretty often, especially when you're trying to write some code that's anticipating the needs of some game designers. You've added some extra features in there that you think they might need. Um, it's also a bit difficult to identify when this is happening to you. Um, you might think that you're being productive because you spent your whole day programming while some other programmer is busy, you know, playing ping pong and eating office snacks uh, for half the day. And um, unfortunately, if the code you're writing never gets used, then that other programmer is actually vastly more productive than you. <laughs> So let's look at some examples. Uh, there's two main ways this typically manifests itself. One is pretty simple case that we can resolve fairly easily, and the second case is more difficult to handle. So let's look at the easy one first. So the easy case is when you are working on a brand new feature that you don't really have a use for yet. And you're doing this under the pretense that you might use it at some point in the future. So for example, say you're working on a first person game and then you decide to make a third person camera, uh, which obviously you don't really need in a first person game. Maybe you've read some article the other day about a great technique for third person camera and uh, you know, lots of games have games and game engines have third person cameras and you think, well, other engines have it, so our game should have it too. Uh, and you start coming up with justifications like, well, you know, I might use it for debugging and I was just in that camera code anyway, so I'm already familiar with the code and, and I just read the article, so that's fresh in my mind. Uh, so it's going to be fast for me to write it now rather than later. And I mean, those sound like great reasons, right? I mean, you've almost convinced me here. Uh, I have almost convinced me here. And, uh, and even though it sounds totally logical, it's really not. And that's the, the core of the, the Yagni principle. You can't just apply this logic to every feature, right? Otherwise, you'd never finish your game. The, the trouble is, adding this extra code that you may never use it may sound harmless, but it actually can be pretty harmful. Um, you just increase the complexity of your code. You maybe have introduced some bugs elsewhere. Uh, every time you have you update your code, you have another new area that you need to maintain. Um, there, there's no reason for it to be there. And, and this is just one feature. Obviously, if you had many features where you had done this with, you would have a ton of unnecessary code in your game engine. And we have to remember, what was my initial justification for doing it now rather than implementing this feature later? It's really a time management argument. Uh, the argument is that it's quicker for me to implement it now while everything's fresh in my mind than to do it later. And uh, that I think is a logical fallacy that Yagni is attempting to address. And you really have to ask yourself, is there any additional cost to me implementing this feature later rather than implementing it now? And by and large, there isn't. <laughs> For most things, there's no additional cost to waiting until you actually need the feature and then implementing it at that time. So that's the easy case. When you're working on a feature that you might never use, and in those cases, you should defer working on it until you actually need that feature. So what's the harder case? The harder case is when you're working on a feature that you know you need, but it's not really clear how much of that feature should be hard-coded versus customizable for a game designer. And um, a customizable system typically requires a lot more architecture and a lot more effort behind it. So making that decision as to whether you should create a highly architected system versus one that's more hard-coded, uh, that is the more difficult Yagni problem to resolve. So the area of code I find this comes up most frequently is artificial intelligence. So that's like the behavior of your enemies, for example. 
And, and if, if you look at, say, an average shooter, it's easy to see why that would be the case. Uh, there's a lot of behaviors that are generic and can be you know, reused across multiple enemies. And then there's some other behaviors that are really specific that might be for a boss or something like that. And so it's not really clear how often you should write something specific and hard-coded and how often you should write the code to be super generalized. Writing a generic AI system to encapsulate all different kinds of behavior is going to be a pretty big undertaking. Uh, much more work than, say, just writing a hard-coded piece of logic for a single enemy. Uh, however, if you have, let's say, 20 different enemies that all share a lot of behavior, it might make more sense to build that you know, more heavily architected system, especially if you want to give your game designers a lot of flexibility in being able to tweak the behaviors of the enemies. Um, so part of making this decision is understanding the scope and needs of your game, but a lot of times even that is not really clear uh, from the onset of development. Overall here though, we're talking about a big architectural decision that could have a huge impact on your ability to ship the game on time and uh, where your game lands on the spectrum of robustness versus hard-coded uh, logic is difficult to predict. And so obviously every game is different. There's no one rule that's going to solve every single case, but I'm going to give you one rule anyways, and that is to follow Yagni. It's a good general principle to guide you in making your the correct decision for your game. And uh, the rule is basically start with something that is simple, short, and hard-coded, and then scale up and add robustness as you go. Uh, it's much easier to scale up than it is to you know have architected this major system and then find out later that you didn't really need it. Uh, it adds complexity for both the coders and game designers if you have a system that you don't really need. And it's almost impossible to scale back down again. So uh, there's other benefits too, actually. So if you start small and then scale up, you'll find that when you go to eventually architect that bigger system, like let's say you find that your game actually does need this. Once you've actually started to architect it, you have a good idea of what you need to build because you've already hard-coded some of this stuff already. So the caveat that I will add here is that you should not use Yagni as an excuse to avoid writing clean code. Um, you have to remember, Yagni is ultimately a time-saving, time-management principle. So you might try to argue that, um, well, I shouldn't go ahead and make my code clean because that's going to take more effort and I am not going to need it. I don't need to write clean code. And that is wrong. <laughs> that's predicated on the false assumption that writing clean code is somehow slower and is not. Um, it's almost always faster to write your code cleanly. So um, yeah, don't use this as an excuse to not write clean code. All right, so let's take a concrete example here. Say you've got a AI for a shooter game and you have some enemy that you know, moves closer to the player until they're in range, takes cover. Once they're in cover, periodically shoots the player. Um, you know, if the player gets too close, then maybe I'll run back to some cover point that's further away from the player. So that's the basic AI behavior we want to encapsulate. So there's really two chunks to this. There's the kind of lower level actions that he's performing, shooting, taking cover, moving. And then there's the higher level decision making. And um, we'll call that his behavior. So, you know, should I turn and run? Should I shoot right now? Um, what should I be doing at this given juncture? So the way I would tackle this is to start with the lower level actions of the character, which is going to be mostly hard coded. So things like um, the movement and the animation system, that kind of stuff will be hard-coded. And you're gonna expose certain variables for customization from the game designer, like the character's movement speed or uh, their firing range, things like that. So once you've got the actions working, the next thing to look at is the decision-making of the character. And this is where things start to get a little fuzzy. You can start to imagine how you would build a more architected AI system to manage its decisions. You know, some games will have this built in and exposed to the player even, like uh, Dragon Age Origins, I think, had something like that, where you could customize the, the way the AI would work. 
you can kind of see how that would be built. You'd sort of uh, build some generic rules uh, and have some variables that can change the way those rules might work. And then you'd have probably some probabilities or priorities to help gauge whether you should or shouldn't apply a rule at a given time. And then the evaluation of those rules would then determine your current action. Uh, so that's how you kind of imagine a more architected system. But I wouldn't recommend jumping that to that right away. And, and that's really the core of, of what I'm trying to say here with Yagni is uh, unless you know you need a advanced system like that, I would recommend hard coding those behaviors in, hard coding some, you know, if I'm in this state, then do that, else do this, hard code some of this stuff first. And then if you find you need a bigger system later, implement that bigger system later. And this is a worthwhile exercise. Uh, that hard coded stuff is not going to be a waste. Uh, you're going to use it. It's going to help you decide how to build your game and, and give you something quickly to uh, test your AI and have your game continue to progress. And on top of that, if you do decide to make this more heavily architected system, you already have a good idea of what's going to go into that system by looking at your hard-coded logic. And it's going to be much easier to architect because you're not guessing and predicting the things you may need in, in this bigger system. You already know what you need because you've hard-coded a few enemies already. So just to summarize these points, um, you should be doing a cost-benefit analysis of your time for major features like this. You need to evaluate, do I really need this right now? And if the answer is no, how much extra time is it going to take for me to implement it later rather than right now? Most of the time, it's really not going to be that much more effort. And if that's the case, you should defer working on it until you actually need it. And for cases where you're working with bigger systems and deciding whether they should or shouldn't be more robust or more customizable, um, err on the side of simpler code with the intention to scale up later if you need it. Okay, so I wanted to bring up one other subject uh, that's closely related to Yagni, and that's optimization. You've probably heard the phrase, premature optimization is the root of all evil. And there's a lot of truth to that, and it's clearly related to this Yagni principle. The main idea is that you don't want to waste time optimizing something that might ultimately be deleted by the time your game is finished. Or maybe it ends up not being a huge consumer of performance by the time you, you know, at the end of your project. Um, and I, I bring it up because it's related to Yagni, but... There's also many cases where you actually should be optimizing as you're writing your code. And deciding whether you should or shouldn't optimize as you're writing is a pretty big subject that deserves its own video. So we'll, uh, we'll cover that another time. But suffice to say, uh, I just wanted to mention it because it's a pretty important subject as it relates to, to Yagni. So that's it for this video. Hopefully that gave you a good introduction to this principle. Uh, it's a pretty big subject that can actually be fairly difficult to master. Uh, but hopefully there are some ground rules here that will put you in a good position to start becoming comfortable with YAGNI, worst acronym ever. So if you enjoyed this, you should subscribe and you'll hear more. Uh, we also have another video uh, on don't repeat yourself principle, which is another very useful one. You should check that out too if you thought this was interesting. That's it. Bye.